Hey everyone, welcome back to the Stoneface Reactions. I am Theta, this is Justin, and we are back with... I've already forgotten the name of the thing I just sent you. We are back with Gunbuster Renewal EX, uh, 1 through 3. Uh, as I understand it, these are side stories taking place during the show. Uh, obviously, I have no idea, because I didn't... These aren't anything that I watched when I originally watched this uh, solo. Justin only knows what I've told him, which is that I don't know. <laughs> so so that means I also don't know. Yeah. Um, I only really just under realized that they existed when I was looking up uh, the science episodes. Or I was trying to figure out if Die Buster had three or six science episodes, and I could only find three. So I stumbled across these, and, you know, we're finishing all of Gunbuster today. Might as well leave nothing left. So no stone unturned, no time dilation unexplored. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, there's not much to talk about, at least until we watch the first one and then figure out what's actually going on. So, so we can yeah, go ahead and get into it. But before we get started, make sure that you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all of that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. There's zero pressure in order to do that. It's just a little bit of extra support and it would be greatly appreciated. Twenty thirty two was Okay, the end of episode five. Yes. Oh, along the orbit, so yeah, it's literally at the end of ep after episode 5. Or at the end of episode 5. Yeah. We never really did see the fighter craft go off. No. See, I love this part of the battle music. Mm-hmm. And then not this part, though. That guy looked like an ace. Had all the stars around it, so I thought, you know, kills. So it's like an alternative shot of what happened. Yeah. Okay. I've experienced this before. You're never going to guess where. Uh, was it uh, Macross? Yeah. They have uh, They have specials. Like they did a... Um, that was like a 40 year special or a 30 year special where it's just literally animations of the planes flying around doing stuff. I mean, that was that. So. Uh, cool. Now we know what to expect. Well, I mean, to be fair, we didn't actually ever see very much of the the jets or the, the mass-produced no. models fight, so... No, I understand it. I I just didn't have expectation, you know? Right. Well, I guess I did, because I've seen stuff like this before. I didn't expect this. What I expected is that we were going to get, like, character interaction stuff. Like, what were these characters doing when other characters were doing stuff? Or, I don't know. This feels like they made two different scenes and then it had feel... to cut time. Yeah, it feels like a deleted scene. Which is still cool, because deleted scenes don't typically get fully animated. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is like somebody took the cutting room floor stuff and said, I could do that. To be fair, somebody could probably take episode six through an AI filter and recolorize it. You ever watch any of those uh, films of, like, here's this uh, video camera footage from, like, 1940? No, but that's amazing. Yeah, they colorized them so you can see what the world looks like, or I guess interpretation of what the world looks like in all those black and white uh, stock stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could probably do that. Take that to episode six if you wanted to. All right, well, let's move on to the next one. I'm learning. Good morning, OG Gage. Is that the name of the school? I think so. 
<laughs> Back to the first episode. And under what? Okay. To be fair, we never saw them underwater either, so. Hardworking guts. But by now you should have. See, it's hot in there. That makes sense for the, uh, the outfits. Also, underwater episode. Makes sense for the outfits. Well, I did call them swimsuits, so. Yeah, to be fair, I guess I'm arguing on your side. Also, the school is right next to the beach. That's right, South Kanawa. Yeah. It's just practicing that, I guess. Ah. Also, I realized I have a mistake I may have made. I'll wait till the end. I said back in episode one. I don't think that was episode one. I think that's post episode five. Maybe? The voices weren't the same as our main characters. Yeah, you're right. Um, and I can't remember the, the daughter of Kimiko's name, but I want to say that's her, and that's that school during that era, because we know that um, our other main character was teaching there. So That, ma that makes sense. It's just the, the voice actors. That's the only reason why I would think that. Also, I think we, we've we seen before that those are like prototypes or something. The the mechs that they're using there. Yep. Because way, way back when, you know, 12,000 and 16 years ago, <laughs> that those things had just been made five months ago. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Any, uh, anything else you want to mention from that uh, that clip? Um, I like that it's on the beach because the outfits look like bathing suits, so it gives a reason. Because I don't think that the training in the water is like a new thing at this point. Well, I think it's more that they say it's hot in the machines, and apparently they're complaining about it. So I guess being able to, you know, air it out, if you will, helps. Yeah. I guess maybe it even explains the slits in the thing, you know, as much as possible. But then again, why wouldn't it just be bikinis? Hell, why wouldn't it just be, um, I forget, I don't know what the name of them are. Uh, just a little boob tape, whatever you call. Oh, um, pasties? There we go, that's the word I was looking for. I think I was thinking pa I was thinking of pasties. All I could think was tassels, and that's not what I want to go with. <laughs> you know, stripper tassels doing this in the mech. <laughs> I mean, it was a good animation, but it's not what you want. Mm. I mean, I could imagine a remake of this with just all goth girls and, like, the, the, the breast tape X thing going on and everyone. Oh, my god! It gets hot in there, man. That's yeah. why we wear breast tape. Why don't you just go naked? No, nah, man. <laughs> I can't do that. Anyway not the same. Yeah, not with all those cameras. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> let's, I guess, move on to number three. The hell yeah. Okay, I take it back. I was saying that this little preview here looked very Gurren Lagann, and I think anybody who knows Gurren Lagann might think why I would say that. But this is just a readout, so no. Oh, Sizzler. That's Young's uh, mech. I mean, it looks like it was in the uh, last episode. They called it the Black Sizzler. Yeah, that's her right there, isn't it? Yeah. I was confused if it wasn't a sickle and a hammer. Yeah, 
実用機としてのシズラーの優位性に疑問の余地はないでも And this is the one power core thing as well. Yep, it's just that too. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Blow up a black hole and then try to escape? That's crazy, man. Don't do that. Yeah, we prefer our pilots not to escape. Wonder if this happens after episode six. I doubt it. Yeah, because there shouldn't be any monsters left. But may this cut all be between episode five and six, all of them. To me, this one feels between because we saw. I think we saw her in this. Well, she was in a black sizzler in episode uh, six. That's why I was just saying. But yeah, I could also see this as after she gets back after their sacrifice, and they're trying to sell this. I see it. They're certainly selling this better than the Gunbuster. Because it said it was simpler to maintain, it didn't say it was better. No, the weapon thing they were just doing. They said every weapon package was better than the Gunbusters. It was an improvement. Hmm. Basically, the Gunbuster's main weapon. Someone's gonna say that the voice actor on the other side of that is one of our main characters, and I'm just not recognizing them. Yeah, I feel that coming. I don't know, is though. That... that feels like Kimiko's uh, daughter. That's what I was about to say. I think this could be post-episode 6. This is what Jung gets up to when she gets back. Also implies that Kimiko's daughter has her main character's body type and her best friend. Wow. Oh yeah, Yumiko would be Kimiko's daughter, huh? Yeah. yeah. So I think I was right. Just the the mismatch of voices to the ones I'm used to from the series just makes me think this has to be somewhere else or somebody else. Yeah, I was in that same boat. So Jung gets back to Earth and then starts testing new weapon systems? It makes sense. Does it? I mean, I guess if we're in the, the the boat of humanity doesn't change, then the next step is to just go back to fighting each other. It's not even a humanity doesn't change. It's more of a we need to be prepared just in case. And if you're going to have anybody take that role of testing, you want someone who's been through it because you're not going to break down anybody else. I realized that was the serious and probably correct answer, but I realized right after you started what the correct answer should have been. But you said, it's not that humanity doesn't change, and then you go, it's that, and then you didn't say what I thought you were or hoping. I was hoping you were going to say, that's why I did the prey motion. You said, it's not that humanity doesn't change, it's that war. War never changes. <laughs> oh god, that would have been perfect. Uh, I thought about it right when you oh. get into, and it's like, oh no, if he's doing the serious answer, what the what the right Damn answer it. probably is. Oh, hold on, let's do a take two. Let's do a take two. 
Yeah, sure. I'll I'll do a little like uh, record scratch or something. Go for it. War never changes. Ah, that's gonna be hard though. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. Le- leave it in that way. It's funnier. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, no. I mean, I liked these. It was the first yeah. one was good because we never saw the the uh, fighter pilots at least do jack shit. Yes. And the point of episode three was basically how alone and isolated you are by giving us only the view from inside the cockpit. So seeing it from the outside at least makes it look a little bit cooler. So Agreed. Uh episode, I like that one. Episode two. Um I guess we just see what the school is up to after episode five. So I guess this is the school under our uh, secondary main character when she would have been an instructor, given the age of uh, what seems like Yumiko in the yeah. uh, the audio. I think that was Yumiko. I can't remember the name of the episode. They had the names of the two people right there on the top. I can't just... I just thought of a better explanation for the, um, for the light-up thing. What light-up thing? Wow, I can't believe I didn't even think of that earlier. Oh, the, the planet. The welcome the back. The planet. You said the light yeah. up thing. It's like, you talking about the Sizzler beam? What are we talking about here? No, no, no. The welcome back. Hit it, hit it. It's going to be weird. Okay. It's, it's going to be in the extras thing. But let's, That's fine. Let's hear it. The welcome back wasn't... I don't think it's possible the welcome back wasn't like a collective choice from the people of Earth. It's possible that the military and the government built that in to react once the signal for the gunbuster hit. You know, I thought maybe you were going to go... I thought you were going to go two different ways. They were both dystopian. One, that it was an automated thing and nobody's left alive on Earth. It's false I'm... hope they're going to land. And maybe if you look at the pan over, you can say, hmm, there's not a lot of moving lights on that planet. You know? Like... You know, you see how the uh, the light fades as though the it's like the rotation of the Earth, and typically yeah. when you see current day pictures, the rotation of the Earth, it's a lot of lights on in one section, and then the daytime sections there's no lights at all, obviously, and that it yeah. rotates without any of that. So it's a dystopian world that that just nobody left. This is an automated system on a dead planet. Or I thought you were going to say when you said the the military, I thought you'd say, oh, it's a military. Um, Junta and Junta, rather, that it's just the military took over right after because they've got all the industrial complex and everything. But that what? my argument was going to be how's the fucking military going to stay in power for twelve thousand years? <laughs> so yeah, I guess the uh, the way to look at it from your dystopian thing is that we did really fuck up the uh, the galaxy, and Earth did not survive. Oh no, so. I'm not. I have zero implications on the sur- actual survival of the Earth. I don't know. I'm pushing it as part of your theory. I'm I'm taking yeah. over your theory and say okay. and attaching it to the fact that we saw parts of the planet were damaged by a small black hole uh, done on the outer edge of the galaxy. I like not, it. Not the outer edge of the galaxy. Outer edge of the true solar system, and that yeah. the massive one we did at the bent middle that destroyed the galaxy may have just completely demolished the uh, human race. The same concept of uh, if a uh, supernova goes off nearby to the Earth. Not to the yeah, Earth. Like, if any of the stars around us went supernova, we would be bombarded by deadly radiation and yeah. would destroy the human race. And who knows what a galactic sized black hole bomb would do. I like it. It's teamwork. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's what happened either. I just can exist in that universe with you. Like if Hell that yeah. if that if we if we saw them land and it was like, oh good they remembered us and it's all like ruined buildings and nobody's around or so it wouldn't even be skeletons. Hell, technically, if you ever watched that old uh, Discover it was a History Channel, Life After Life After People, or what was it called? Yeah. Even the buildings would have like disintegrated after twelve thousand years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there would be nothing left. They would. That and I guess in that case there wouldn't be lights, so it couldn't be that. 
the light there would be no light system to work. So I guess I've ruined that whole theory there by remembering a bad history channel show. Eh, it's all good. Yeah, anyway, any uh final thoughts on the entirety of Gunbuster here at the very end? It was good. I like what they did. Yeah, I think it's one of my makes my top See, my, my problem with memory is the same reason why I never do, like, an anti-chart thing where I list all the anime I've ever watched because I can't remember all the anime I've ever watched. I'm going to generously say top 10, but more likely probably top 20. Yeah. There's always the case where if I did make a list, I would start pushing stuff down as I remember it. So, it's hard to say. Top 20 for now. Let's say top 20. Top 20 for now, I think, feels right. Well, clearly, top 20 for you. Everything is still in the top 20 for you. We have to get yeah. past 20. <laughs> you know. All right. Well, I think that's it for us on Gunbuster. So I guess catch us next week with the uh, start of Die Buster. Hell uh, yeah. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll catch you then. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stone Face Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?